recording from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. Aurora is being particularly cuddlesome today. Well, <laughs> without further ado, I'm going to give her a kissy boo and plunge right in with LPK says, Dear Lady C, there are so many conflicting reports of Harry and Meghan's marriage that I don't know what to believe. Do you know what you believe? <laughs> That's interesting. I trust your judgment. Thank you. And while I know you refuse to predict, I keep on hearing you say you're not a fortune teller. I certainly am not. Though you seem to have an uncanny ability to get things right when I look back on what you what you've said over the years. Can you analyze the situation in such a way that it makes sense to us onlookers? <sighs> well, this is the ongoing saga and the ongoing question, isn't it? Does anybody really know what's going on? Do they really know what's going on? Does he really know what's going on? And does she know what's going on from minute to minute, except what bright ideas she comes up with? I think she certainly knows where she's heading. And as I said some time ago, when she was taken on by William Morris Endeavour, which I understand she wangled her way in gratis friends of hers. Let's see what they come up with because they have actually been staring her in the right direction might not be the right word, but there is definitely a total separation, except when it is convenient for the both of them, of their brand. I said some time ago that I was told that once Meghan was clearly out of the royal family, which she really is, they don't want to touch her with, with a barge pole. They don't want to have anything to do with her. And they, there's no longer even the pretense that they are much loved members of the family and that there's really any space in any palace for her. They are alert to the fact and aware of the reality of Meghan being a pure poison where they are concerned. This has, in a funny sort of way, freed her because it means she can be the lone wolf maverick solo operator that she has really always been. Her personability is that of a lone wolf making alliances. You know, even when she was on suits, people didn't find her comforting. The average person on suits did not like her because Meghan, as do many people with her personality, or let me rephrase that, many people of her personality type, people who are set out to charm you so that they can get out of you what they want. These are really opportunistic exploiters. I mean, it goes along with narcissistic personality types. You might think they are being a good friend to you because 
they let you talk about yourself and they don't give away anything of any substance about themselves. I mean, they may appear to be, oh, girly, girly, interesting. Oh, yes, just such a girl, such a girl. It's all an act. I saw it with my mother and I see it with Megan of what everybody who knows her well has told me. She plays her cards very close to her chest. With everyone, she does it with men. She did it with her family. She did it with the royal family. She does it with friends. Some of her friends do not actually realize the enormity of what they have previously said. For instance, oh, she's so selfless. She's not really, she can't wait to hear, oh, tell me about yourself. No, don't worry about me. Tell me about yourself. She's so self-abnegating, but she's not. That is a slick narcissistic operator's way of gathering information and also allowing people to believe that they care about them when in fact they are on information gathering exercises. She does it with everybody, evidently. That doesn't mean she doesn't play the cards that she wishes to play, but they are not revelatory cards. They are manipulative cards. Oh, H, I'm just so destroyed. I can't stand it if nobody loves me. Ever since I gave up my glowing career for you, it's just awful. I mean, you know, and I'm just, you know, I can't take any more. I don't want to be here. No, I don't want to be here. No, H, I don't. I don't. Oh, H, I wish you could protect me. Oh, 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 what can I do, Meg? Oh. Well, you can shut down the press. I mean, they're so nasty and beastly about me. They throw out a diet of drama, but it's to have you hopping to their commands and demands. In a situation like that, the narcissist is usually very inventive. They create drama as it presents itself. Well, if they are strategic, and she is, they have a long-term plan to get from A to C via U being B. That causes befuddlement. That causes insecurity. I mean, you only need to look at the way Harry stands around like a third-rate butler, because first-rate butlers don't behave the way he does. And the way he leaps to the door, not the way a gentleman leaps to the door to open it for Megan, or the way a butler, a top butler, or even a second-rate butler would open the door for someone, but the way a third-rate butler would do it. There is a tremendously exploitative element, apparently, and I say this for legal reasons. 
because one has to go off their conduct. Uh, and I'm not coming to any conclusions of my own. I am not influenced by my hopes, my desires, my fears, anything. My sentiments are totally devoid in this matter. I go off the evidence of the subject as he or she presents me with the evidence. And Megan's an operator that really off the evidence that has been presented to me has exploited herself. She has changed herself to achieve the success that she has been hungry for. That degree of ambition is unhealthy in my view. It is, it is generated by tremendous self-doubt, self-hatred, non-acceptance of self, and then the person creates a new self, and that self will achieve the hope for them, what they wish to achieve. So they use themselves as much as they're using everybody else to fulfill their own ambitions. So this type of personality is not propelled and motivated by anything except desire and ambition. There's not a spiritual element that there should be with a healthy, well-rounded individual. Nor is there an emotional element in terms of satisfying themselves emotionally. They're not in touch with their emotions, if indeed they have them. It's an open question whether people like that really have anything except the most superficial and really dullened emotions, which of course allows them to ride roughshod over themselves, because that's what they're really doing. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that they then ride a roughshod over everybody else, because they have ridden roughshod over their true selves to achieve their ambitions by creating an untrue self that they then regard as their real self. I'm authentic. I'm authentic. I've created my authenticity. Well, you don't create your authenticity. You either have it or you don't. Well, with all of that going on, is it any wonder? Because people like that are extremely controlling. They don't only control others, they control themselves and their desires, except they can't maintain this stranglehold upon themselves. So they are usually either very volatile or very into dampening down themselves with external elements, shall we say? Calming themselves down and creating new selves on a daily basis. Well, can you imagine the true self is constantly being betrayed by the ambitious artificial self. 
So it's not possible for people like that to actually have really profoundly solid relationships. But that doesn't mean they don't have a firm stranglehold on their victim of choice because they usually do. Remember, according to Megan, she asked Valet von Festen Holtz, is he nice? Because if he's not nice, there's no point. You can actually think of other words that also convey the same thought. Is he malleable? Is he a pushover? Is he a patsy? Is he somebody I can have my way with? I cannot predict the outcome of Harry and Meghan's marriage. I don't think they can predict at this point the outcome of their marriage because marriages like that are so push and pull, so volatile, one minute so icy, the next minute so volcanic, the next minute so lovey-dovey, because the controlling party in the marriage reels them in and then casts them back out. Because also, personality types such as I'm speaking about, they get bored as well. They're bored with themselves. They don't have selves the way you and I have a self. They are empty vessels topping themselves up with a whole load of a racket on a daily basis. They are hoping to conceal their emptiness from themselves with noise, with activity, with distraction. That's right. That's just Megan. What about Harry? <laughs> Harry is paranoid, genuinely. But then she has aspects of paranoia as well. But she is in the driving seat. He's not in the driving seat. Make no mistake about that. She is the driving force in that relationship and sometimes she winds him up and all lets him go oh, 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 I'm such a big show man oh, oh, oh. and then but Meg can't I ever do anything right for you oh, Meg may I fade you again and then now I better open that door exactly right this way now. They say that when you deal with narcissistic personalities, you walk on eggshells. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Beyond saying, as long as it suits her, I think that they are going to stay together. I don't see him having the strength of character or the intelligence. She is a far stronger character than he is, and she has far more brain cells than he does. This gives her a tremendous advantage. Also, she has less heart than he does. And that's saying a lot because he has shown himself in the last few years with the way he has treated his grandfather, his grandmother, the way he has treated his father, his stepmother, his brother, 
his sister-in-law, and let's not even get on to the other relations. That if he has much of a heart, I am a possum, and I'm no possum. But you know, personalities like that are so unpredictable, but so predictable in their unpredictability, that ultimately, even when you are totally bored with their antics, it still fascinates because they are addicted to, well, in her case, to fame and fortune and success, although she has not proven herself to be particularly good at the success, unless you're successful as a failure. But she certainly proven herself to be very adept at generating lots of chatter, lots of noise, lots of fascination because of her true dreadfulness. And he is not that far behind. You know, when you live with a narcissist, some of Their failings suck you in to the extent that even if you don't naturally possess them, just being caught up in the scenario means that some of it rubs off on you. And Harry is a very egotistical. Meghan and Harry have a lot in common. And this is why their marriage could last as long as it suits her. Because he loves those children. She's moved him out of his stable situation, which was not in her interest to be in Britain, a member of the royal family, surrounded by his friends, his family, that was a no-no. First of all, it meant she had to defer to an extent to established forms and norms. Secondly, it meant that should she ever need to leave, she was going to leave with nothing or very little. And she's too clever to have allowed that to continue. So, oh, ain't you know, you're such a prisoner. I mean, you should be free. You know, let's, let's go to LA. We'll be free in LA. You can walk barefoot forever in LA. And we can make shed loads of money, H. You know, it's going to be wonderful, H. I mean, we're going to be the leading stars in Hollywood. I mean, that Angelina Jolie, she's going to suck my toes. That's right. And she's going to kiss you or you know what. Because she's just a star. Well, we are royalty. And we are going to be bigger than them all. And H, it's only a matter of time before we present the Oscars every year. Every major thing we're going to be a part of. And the idiot has fallen for it. He's in a very weakened, invidious position. And she has encouraged him to violate not only the confidences, of his closest associates 
relations and encounters down to with whom he lost his virginity and whether he has a sausage or a rosebud a tip and violating his brother's personal space in that regard as well. And that's just one of the many things he's violated. So he's burnt his bridges. And he knows it because he's tried to wangle his way back in. And a lot of doors have been slammed in his face. He is well and truly isolated unless he has the humility which I don't think he possesses to do a mea culpa and say to everybody I really got this wrong please forgive me I made a huge balls up I really thought that she loved me and that she wanted what was best for me. And I can now see I've been taken for a massive ride. His pride alone is going to prevent him from doing that. I think. I could be wrong. Hopefully I will be wrong. But I honestly don't see the possibility of predicting accurately. And remember, I am the person who was told by now six separate reliable sources that the marriage is in big trouble and Harry is the one who called in the lawyers. And I have said all along, both publicly and privately, you can place no reliance on anything you hear regarding either of them because they have taken a leaf out of Diana's book. Confuse the enemy. One minute you're heading, which direction are you going in? North, south, east, west. Well, which one is it? It's north. Actually, it's south. Actually, it's east. No, it's west. They're like egg beaters in people's brains. That doesn't mean that every now and then, amidst all of the chaos, the drama, and quite frankly, in misinformation and deliberate disinformation, that there isn't a kernel of truth. But you know, as I learned really with my ex-husband and my mother, when you're dealing with people whose work is so totally unreliable and whose hold on reality is so untenable don't believe a thing wait for the facts to materialize don't believe a thing i hope that answers the question harry's ginger <laughs> ginger merkin says <laughs> i love the names if graydon carter is saying the harkers are overexposed could this be why the Duchess of Hertz is conspicuously absent whenever has been makes a public appearance? Note that he was alone again just the other day when meeting veterans at the Warrior Games in San Diego, when the wife has been present previously when meeting US veterans and also at the Inflictus. <laughs> love it events in Canada, Netherlands, etc. Will she make an appearance for Inflictus 2023 in Germany and perhaps miss out on the many clothing <laughs> merch opportunities? <laughs> well, as I said originally, some time ago when William Morris Endeavour came on the scene. They wanted them to separate 
as entities because her lack of an association with the royal family and her inability to be acceptable to or accepted by the British royal family and the British supporters of the royal family meant that there was no way for her to go, nowhere for her to go, and no way to go except hiving off. She could be supporting him, she could be more supportive, and this tends to indicate <coughs> that the rumours about the marriage being rocky are, uh, they have substance, they have substance. That doesn't mean that she won't pop up like the bad fairy every now and then, because she will, if it suits her. Uh, and he will go along with it, because he knows that if he doesn't go along with it, Either he's going to make a clean cut and a clean escape and somehow try to gain some access to those children because she's not going to give up custody of those children. I mean, there's no way, you know, she's Doria's daughter. She knows all about milking the cow. And my goodness, two sets of royal udders. Oh, gosh, talk about it. Grabbing those teats and squeezing them till the milk squirts everywhere. They are overexposed. They're both overexposed, but she is a publicity junkie, and so is he. He has developed a taste, and you know, it's rather interesting. In psychology, they warn you about the thing that you fear the most is sometimes the thing that you invite more readily than anything else, because sometimes what you think you really loathe is actually what you really want. You just can't face it. And he's an attention junkie as well. But the more they are separated as a brand and the more separate lives they lead as a couple, because she makes a nuisance of herself, I have been told, by people in California. She's always texting people. Can we get together? Can we get together? Let's hang out. Let's hang out. <laughs> people don't want to hang out with her. They don't want to say no, but they definitely don't want to say yes. And they don't say yes. So they dodge the bullet they are happier to hang out with him because pathetic and unattractive as he has become, he still has greater appeal than she does because people sense he's actually a nicer person. And doesn't that tell you something? So not only do people not want to hang out with her, and she's quite brazen about asking herself to things. And people have learned to decline and they avoid her like the plague. They avoid him less, but they avoid him as well. Evidently, I have been told, because aside from anything else, they don't want her touching them 
for free flights on their private planes. Because this was one of the things that she used to do, evidently. So let us see what happens, because is she going to show up for the Inflictus Games in Dusseldorf? It is interesting that she has started to listen to William Morris' endeavour, because maybe she's finally beginning to learn her lessons, but she's not a know-it-all. Notwithstanding that fact, she is an arch manipulator and she can't help herself. Look at what she did in New York. Look at how she snatched attention away from Gloria Steinem's Ms. Awards, the Women of Vision Awards, and turned it all into a farce with a 80 mile an hour <laughs> car chase throughout New York. So even when William Morris Endeavour set things up and warned her, she can't help herself. But she's helping herself enough to be not all elbows anymore. She's beginning to hold back occasionally. Interesting, no? So I'm going to end with Cheryl Arizona, who says, Dear Lady C, forgive me if you have covered this before. My question is this. Did the royal family have MI5 or MI6 do a background check on Meghan? I would think that having the Diana debacle in their rear view mirror, they would have wanted to avoid what has been happening with the Montecito duo. Also, is asking the Queen's approval to marry a requirement or just a courtesy? As always, I love, love, love your ensembles, especially your jewellery and headbands. Thank you so much. Much love to you and your family, furry and otherwise. Thank you. It's a requirement. If you're close enough in the line of succession, you are by law obliged to have the approval of the sovereign, failing which any marriage you contract is invalid. There is an alternative way of going about it. If the sovereign declines to issue his or her approval, you can then apply, which Princess Margaret tried to do, uh, to the powers that be to be granted permission to marry. The Queen did not want Harry to marry Meghan. Prince Philip was dead against the marriage. That is one of the reasons why Meghan was able to treat Prince Philip and the Queen with the discourtesy that she did. And Harry allowed her to treat his grandparents with the discourtesy and disrespect that she did and that he thereafter by acts of omission when they were not acts of commission colluded with her in doing to his grandparents because they both knew the queen and prince philip did not approve of the marriage prince philip saw her for what she was the queen who was a more accepting personality, liked 
aspects of Megan, because Megan can be very charming and personable when she wants to be. But the short answer is nobody gets close to the royal family who is not thoroughly checked out. Don't think the authorities didn't know exactly what they were dealing with once it became apparent that Meghan was playing a prominent part in Harry's life. They knew exactly. They knew where everybody was buried. And there are a graveyard full of bodies. But Harry was determined to marry Meghan. And Harry was determined to believe that theirs was a special love. The stars have aligned. Take out the violins and play. Limerence runs in the British royal family. Excessive limerence runs in the British royal family. The Queen had a degree of sympathy for it because she was prone to it. Her father was prone to it with her mother. Her uncle David was prone to it with a series of women. Frida Dudley Ward, Thelma Furness, Wally Simpson, to mention but three. The main three. King George IV was prone to it with Maria Fitzherbert. <clears throat> his uncles, two of his uncles were prone to it and had married unsuitably, which caused his father to create the Royal Marriages Act of 1772. It is a well-established thing in the Hanoverian line. Queen Victoria was prone to it as well. They form excessively close, actually close is the wrong word. They form excessively strong ties to their love objects, no matter how unsuitably the love object in conduct and desirability will turn out to be. Maria Fitzherbert was unsuitable. The first Duke of Sussex, he had two unsuitable wives, not one, two. I can go on and on. The Queen was faced with a dilemma. If she said no, Harry would have married Meghan in any event, and Harry warned them, according to my sources. Very reliable sources. That if they did not consent to the marriage, they would be accused of racism. And knowing that that was not a possibility, but a probability, she took the view, the better thing is for the marriage to proceed and let's hope things work out and the positive parts of Meghan will predominate over the negative. And she's going to be in a new situation and it's a very desirable situation. And she will, she is intelligent enough and she is ambitious enough and she appears to be willing enough to play the role to the hilt. So they thought, well, or the Queen thought, evidently Prince Philip was not in favour of it. 
but he was made of sterner stuff than she was. But he understood the necessity for the Queen to give her consent, and she gave it. And I have to tell you, I'm not sure she was wrong. I mean, she, I actually think she most likely was right to give it. Because can you imagine the hue and cry there would have been had she refused to give consent with the accusations of racism that Harry and Meghan and Doria would have been wading in with, and then the Commonwealth would have been tremendously affected, and they would have believed that it was racism. Well, this way, ultimately, Meghan and Harry's conduct has shown it's their characters, not racism, that are the objectionable features and that have brought about the unfortunate situations that exist. And on that note, I will say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, please remember to keep the questions and comments coming in because this cannot be done without your cooperation. Okay, thank you so much. And if you have really enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and Godspeed. Bye-bye.